Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Good run Tuesday it morning and welcome run to Run It, it Back. We are here live in Los yeah, Angeles. Yeah. Look who's back, y'all. Hey. Anything you want to share? <laughs> no, no, no. Just happy to be back oh. working with you, Michelle. That's okay. <laughs> it wasn't even that wasn't even heartfelt. Uh, Evan Turner, Chandler Parsons, Eddie Gonzalez, and Sham Sharania joining us from Chicago, where hopefully he's busy. I don't know, finagling some ping pong balls in favor of myself. Uh, Shams, how are you doing this morning? I'm good, Michelle. Teams like the Spurs right now are just fretting tonight. I don't know if they're sweating. I don't know if they're oh, yeah. angry. I, they're going through a lot of emotions. So I, I just wonder what you're going through. So. There's no, and there's nothing God you can you do. Today. We're just going to wait on the little... You know, I'm not going to do it because it makes too many jokes. But we do finally have <laughs> basketball tonight, which is, oh, thank goodness we have something to talk about. And it's preview time, Lakers, Nuggets, you know, the Western Conference Finals we all thought we would have. Uh, 8.30 Eastern over on ESPN. It is a rematch of the bubble. They did split the season series 2-2. Two and two. Um, By the way, home teams won each of those games, if you're keeping track. It's obviously a Jokic versus AD matchup. Chandler, I'm going to start with you. Who has the edge? I mean, it's got to be the Nuggets. They, they've had the better season. They have the better team. Uh, the the Lakers, the turnaround that they've had always has been so impressive. It's it's crazy that we're even talking about them in the Western Conference Finals against the Nuggets. But <laughs> you look at these two matchups. These are insane. These are two of the el most elite bigs. They can do it all. They're versatile. And it's, it's honestly a battle of who gets who in foul trouble. The quickest for me. It's it's the, the, the mm. thin bigs on, on both sides. I don't know who else is going to guard one another when both of these guys go out of the game. They're going to be matched up every minute they're in the game so this is definitely the most exciting matchup you can't really contain Jokic he's still going to do what he does he's still going to get everyone else involved which I think gives him the advantage but uh, this is what it's all about this is the two of the top three big guys in the NBA and they're going to be going at it yeah I agree with Chandler you know you can't really contain Jokic you really have to just you know worry about what you can do and right now I think AD just as of the last series he's been playing active he's been activated the whole time and whenever he's into it He's dominant, and he goes as the team goes. You see, last game, he was 17 and 20, only had 11 shots. And, you know, to this point, when his energy is up and he's defending that paint and uh, he's energetic, I think, uh, you know, he puts the Lakers in the best position to succeed. Yeah, I think, you know, when you think of AD's defense, he really helps on the perimeter. He really helps as a help defender. He, he stays off the paint. He's not necessarily bodying a guy 30 feet from the basket who can make threes and who can also put you under the rim. Uh, I, I think about the other side as well. He's gonna, Jokic is gonna have to guard Anthony Davis because there's no other option out there for them. Um, Aaron Gordon is gonna have to guard LeBron and then you're getting smaller and worser at that point. So, <laughs> so how is Jokic gonna handle that? If Jokic is ever in foul trouble, what do they do if he has to come off the court for an extended time? So it's on Anthony Davis to be aggressive, to take more than 11 shots, like you mm -hmm. just said, and, and to push his team to the finals. And uh, I think he's got a good chance that he's gonna. God, what has happened to this season? <laughs> Shams, uh, you were in the bubble. You are obviously, I know, I know. Even if you to say, our bubble boy. Um, the biggest differences between the series we're about to watch starting tonight versus what happened back in 2020. What do you think? Yeah, I've been speaking about the Nuggets being in the bubble and seeing them down there. So I'm not, I haven't been surprised all year. Hopefully you guys can attest to that. I feel like the prime, <laughs> uh, th this team is deep. But I think the one difference you have from this year and 2020 was in 2020, the Lakers had waves of defenders to throw at Nikola Jokic. You had Dwight Howard, who wasn't at his peak, but he was playing at a very high level uh, that season for the Lakers. JaVale McGee, he started for them. Yeah. Uh, he played uh, very well. Both of those guys played very well on Nikola Jokic splitting time. And Anthony Davis would guard him in spurts, but it wouldn't be all, you know, all, all that much ex you know, extended throughout the game. And I, this year, the Lakers don't really have that luxury. Uh, they, they, they don't have that size. And Mo Bamba is, seems to be out in game one. He's listed out. Um, he's a guy that they acquired at the deadline. You thought he might play a backup center role. That's what they were needing at different points. So not having those waves of defenders, I'm very curious how that puts AD in terms of foul situation, 
Um, and just overall having the depth to throw different guys at Nikola Jokic, which I think worked out <laughs> very, very well in 2020. Now, Jokic, <laughs> in all of his answers, this entire playoffs run has been my favorite. To be honest, I don't even remember what he learned from facing the Lakers back in 2020. Look, it's the number one offense that Denver has. It's the number one offense or defense that the Lakers have, which is just some interesting science matching up there, Chandler. Um, how does that work in favor of the Lakers? Well, the good thing for the Lakers is defense usually travels, and, and this is something that it's, it's not a talent. It's an effort. It's a will, and the Lakers seem to be doing that on the defensive end and, and then we talk about all year long the only holes the Nuggets really have is their defense and Jamal Murray and Jokic and pick and roll and now Jokic again like Eddie just said AD's got to make it a point to come out so aggressive he's got to try and get him in foul trouble he's got to absolutely dominate the paint and make him play on both ends of the floor he can't be comfortable or he's just going to pick them apart all series long and it's going to be quick so there's also an onus on, on the other the guards on the Lakers with Austin Reeves, D'Lo, Schroeder they collectively have to offset Jamal Murray because he's also playing well. He looks more like the bubble Jamal Murray. And when those two guys are going, they are tough to beat. You have to find a way to make Aaron Gordon beat you. You have to find a way to have Michael Porter beat you. Guys like Bruce Brown, and they, they stepped up last series, but I'll take my chances if I'm the Lakers. I'm going to defend. I got to cut the water off on one of those two guys, and, and then I have a chance. But it's easier said than done. These guys are elite. These guys play unselfish. These guys make all the other guys around them better. So it's going to really test the Lakers defense. I know they're number one right now, but they haven't played it off, uh, defended against an offense like the Nuggets. Yeah, I agree with Chandler. I think one thing that occurs from, you know, game one is coming in and setting a tone. You can't let a offensive player like Jokic come in and be comfortable, pick his poison, try to figure out how he's going, you know, to, uh, you know, infiltrate your defense. I also think, like you said before, Chandler, they have to come in and make sure Jamal Murray isn't comfortable. He's a dangerous scorer. Literally, the second he gets going, the energy changes, and he can go from five points to 25 real quick, and you mix that in with a Jokic 30, 15, and 10. It could be a long night, and Aaron Gordon's playing great basketball along with Bruce, Bruce Brown. But I think, you know, if the Lakers come in and set the tone, I think everything will go their way, especially on the offensive end. Get stops and get out and run. This, I, this part, I think, is fascinating. Both these teams are 6-0 and in the playoffs, <laughs> and, and the road thing. Who's going to be the first? We've had multiple guys who've played out there on this show say the Denver home mm. court advantage, it, yeah. it actually it's exists. No joke. It's yeah. real. The Lakers Unfair. are an older team. They push the ball. They, they do play with pace. They are an older team. We've seen the, the, the big fella look a little old this, yeah. in these playoffs. Um, so I think their home court will win out, but that is not to say the Lakers can't win on that court. Uh, wh what I am interested in is – how they defend that pick and roll, we keep mentioning. They had a ton of issues with Steph Curry with that pick and roll. Now, Jamal Murray is not Steph Curry, and you don't have to guard him to the timeline, <laughs> but they have to figure out what they're going to do about that because Jokic is a master at slipping. If he gets the ball at the nail, it's, it's basically a basket for somebody, and they got to figure out what they're going to do with that, and that's the series to start. After that, the adjustments will happen, and we'll go from there. But it's going to be a tight game one, and that home court is going to matter. And we always talk about this home court because the altitude, but it's also the way this team plays, right? Mm -hmm. They play fast. They're often they don't. You can't take a playoff on defense with this team because they can hurt you in so many different ways. And one game in between each game, yeah. that is tough. That's tough for LeBron. He's old, and I don't put anything <laughs> past him <laughs> because old. he just continues to get better and better somehow. But the one game with that flight, with that altitude, that is a lot. That is a lot. And not to mention the Nuggets have lost. All seven of their playoff series against the Lakers. So th th maybe th th they could finally get the monkey off their back. They can do this, but it's not like playing any other team. There's a there's an amount of pressure that you get when you play against the Lakers. It packs a bigger punch. Yep. And now, not only are you knocking off the Lakers, you're lock you're knocking off LeBron James. So th this is a tall task for the Nuggets, even though I do think they're a better team and have the edge. The one day off is kind of nuts. No, it does true. feel like a lot. Yeah, I thought Brown would have had that handle in advance, got himself <laughs> yeah, three days yeah. off, maybe. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put something in between, but Paul. The script. The script the script was broken during the scheduling <laughs> of this series. Shams, biggest question mark for this Lakers team is what? Well, I think you saw at the end of that for, uh, second round series uh, when Darwin Ham made the adjustment, started Dennis Schroeder uh, in game six. I'm very curious. Do you stay with that uh, and stay with Dennis Schroeder? When, when you talk to people around this team, I think there's more of a sense Jared Vanderbilt. You start bigger. You have a bigger defender potentially for Michael Porter Jr., so just the battle of adjustments, which Eddie just mentioned, I, I would be kind of surprised if you go with Dennis Schroeder uh, right off the bat. I think that was a good adjustment for the series against the Warriors, against Gary Payton the second. But seeing how the adjustments take place over the course of a series, uh, because the Nuggets, for the most part, they're locked in with their starting five. There's not going to be much starting five change 
for the Nuggets. I think the Lakers are going to be the ones who might have to tinker at different points. I mean, who's feeling this more as far as, like, maybe we have more to lose or it feels like we have more to lose, Denver or L.A.? To be honest with you, in my personal position, I feel like Denver. You hmm. know, whatever happened a couple years ago, you know, with the Lakers and everything, that's old news. But since then, I feel like the Lakers have been having to work their way out the mud and they're in a position where we none of us thought they'd be. And with Denver, you're dealing with a two-time, you know, uh, league MVP. You're dealing with guys that are really trying to, uh, you know, earn their right, earn their stripes. And, you know, to kind of not make it over this hurdle versus Asian LeBron, you know, it kind of sets you back a bit because c come next year, you're going to have a different look of Western Conference teams and different groups that, you know, might not be as advantageous this year. So. Yeah, I think it's definitely the Nuggets. I think they're the better team. They're the number one seed that no one even put. It's, it's crazy to me still we're talking about the Lakers in the Western Conference <laughs> Finals. It's yep. already a success right. for this team. And so Jokic, also, he's got pressure. He just saw Joel Embiid, who got the MVP. He's out. Everyone talks about you got to put you're in a different you know, character in a different cast when, when you win a championship. This is his year. It is wide open for him. We're talking about playing the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. They started off 2-10 and 10 this year. Yeah. Pressure's all on Denver. It's all on Jokic. And also, too, with Jokic as well, like, we joke and everything, but he's going up against Anthony Davis. Yeah. So, like, it's going to be a tough... <laughs> it's going to be a tough... This is real. Like, he's going to bring his lunch pail. He has to bring Pretty his lunch good. pail to re really, you know, get that rep and kind of... You know, slay the kings of the West, to be honest with you. I'll be the guy and say... Do it! I was wondering <laughs> if you would. I'll be the guy. Okay, and, good. And, and, and Michelle, I'm going to say just for you, it's because LeBron. Okay. When he steps on the court, it's history on the line. He's getting closer and closer to try to get six rings, which we all know is hollow ground, which we all know is the Michael Jordan situation. Well. But this might be his last chance to win a title. This might be his last chance to make a deep run into the playoffs. As you may have heard, he's 39 years old. What? He's just, he's just or as Chandler season. says, old. <laughs> just says old. So I, I do think it rests on this. The historic franchise There's the date with the Celtics after this as well, mm. and, and, and to, to have the most titles in franchise history. And look, the Lakers, They've had, it's been up and down. It's been up and down, and, and this is what they do. This is what they've historically done. They compete for titles, and they want to win. So I do think it is a little more pressure on them. The Nuggets, I think they're the ones that are happy to be here. Yo, the MVP, he got here. He's happy to be here. But I'll I say this. Do not let the Lakers win this championship, because yeah. if he wins this after everything yeah. they've been through this season, tell me he's not the best player of all time. I'll if tell he you. Wins, scoring with, record. <laughs> and scoring a record. <laughs> and wins the championship. <laughs> This, this, wasn't, this wasn't even his okay. team two months ago. And if he takes this team somehow, and I know they got better. I know other guys are playing well. I know Austin Reeves is playing very well. I know long. Anthony Davis. But <laughs> my God, if this dude finds a way to knock no, off right. the number one seat and then Bye, goes George. and beats Boston, who it's going to be in the... How do you know it's going to be Boston? You, got, you all are disrespecting. Sure, I, mean, I don't know. Is this Chicago Chicago Heat culture, though? Put, right. a, put, a, put an Heat end culture. on the whole debate, because if LeBron James wins a championship this year, after everything this team, they were the laughing stock for four months. They made a couple moves. This hurts. And then they win the championship this year? We thought they were going to be in the victor sweepstakes. Over Michael that would be... Come on. Over Michael Jeffrey Jordan? Yeah. Hey, listen... Come on, what else, what what else can the guy do? No, just, what no, are you about to say? What else can the guy do, Evan? He would, I mean, he would. Oh, well, look at Evan he, right he, now. He's know struggling. I feel about my top, I, I top know. five, top I know. It's your top five, eight, seven. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a great 1A, 1B. Oh, here we go. Who's A? He's starting again. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Thank you. And that's why Evan's my favorite. Thank you. Like, <laughs> you're over here starting things going on. Uh, look, right now, the Nuggets are the favorite uh, on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, Jokic to be the Western Conference MVP. Is anybody going against that? I forgot Here we are. that exists. I forgot yeah, that award exists. Like yeah, I, know, I know. Well, there are awards for everything these days. I'm not. No. I'm, I'm taking my little change, and uh, I'm a bet with AD. Oh, are you? Wow. Yeah, I, I, okay. like, I love that matchup. I'm not going to lie, because I think the Lakers are going to win. You, win, you really? Gonna... Okay, so we got Lakers, AD. <laughs> Nuggets in five. Nuggets in five. In five? Nuggets in five. Whew. That's aggressive. I think they get both Gutsy. at home. I think they steal one in, in L.A., and it's a wrap. Going Dang, back. I'm one like game it. in between, going down 3-1. If, if they're down, if they're up 3-1, it's a wrap going back to Denver with one game in between. Against LeBron, Eduardo. Defense, LeBron defense wins championships. Defense travels. I got, I got Lakers in seven. What? Oh, whoa. We have two I, Lakers up here? <laughs> Lakers in seven. Well, if they go seven, they're definitely not winning the finals because LeBron can't. <laughs> he can't do two. Sacrifices you know I mean? need to be made seconds. for our, By the way, he's our, only our grown adult child, Jason Tatum. <laughs> seven in Denver, too. If it goes to seven, they have no shot, Eddie. Oh, my God. I wish we could fast forward. 
forward this. Figure I can't, out if we'll I, be can't, happy. I can't say a one-off game, just like Steph earlier this year, uh. LeBron James in a one-off game. I'm not picking against him. I'm sorry. That's fair. Like just one game. Oh, this is awful. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, at least it starts tonight. We're one step closer to figuring it all out. The East starts mañana, uh, Miami and Boston, which I don't even know why we're going to talk about it. You got, everyone up here has already told me that Boston's winning. I don't know why. Third time in past four seasons that they have played each other in the Eastern Conference Finals. They, too, have split the season series at two apiece. Um, Tatum, obviously, from the second half mm. of the fourth quarter of mm. Game 6 all the way through Game 7 was amazing. How do you slow him down? It's tough. And he's had some inefficient games where they, where teams can get him to settle. He takes long twos. But he, he's got to make an effort to get to the to the basket. He's got to get to the free throw line. And, and again, if he, if he shows anything like he did in game seven, it's going to be tough. Because I feel like the Celtics are this team that had a very good season all year long. Outside of Milwaukee, they're arguably the best team in the NBA all year long. And in the playoffs, I feel like we haven't even seen them kind of scratch the surface. So I, I think they're the toughest team to beat. I think they're the best team of the four remaining uh, I think there should be the favorites to, to win the championship this year but when you got Tatum being efficient and playing how he's playing mm. with Jalen Brown doing what he's doing it's the best duo in the league uh, and and they also defend so I, I think they're very tough to beat but the heat are tough as well I mean as an eight seed a play in a play in winner uh, everything Jimmy Butler's done this postseason, they're they're also extremely tough, and they have that DNA to match up good with Boston. But I just think Boston mm. has too much, and, and, and Tatum and Brown are going to be too much. Yeah, I agree, too. And it's not even so much of slowing Tatum down. It's just stopping them. If you look at game six versus Sixers, I mean, he was like, what, one for 14 oh, going man. into the fourth? He made four shots. And that game was as close as anything. That could have, you know, ended their, ended their series. So I think one thing that's going to encourage, you can't, Slow him down, you gotta stop him, send two people at him. Get the ball out of his hands, because even with that, he's playing a full game. He's bringing home 13 rebounds each night. He's getting six assists, and he knows he can score. So he's literally like, it's not if my shot's gonna fall, it's when it's gonna fall. And usually, the team has him within four or five points at all times, so. Yeah, what, what I loved about what he did in game seven, he he, he had the in-between game working, which you rarely see from Jason yeah. Tatum. You, you you know, I joke about him, he's like a robotic hooper. You can yeah. see the training he's done. Yeah, yeah. But he let it go. He was hitting floaters. He was hitting pull-up mid-range. And then he's obviously going to take his sidestep threes and make those two <laughs> once he gets it going. But he, he, it looked like he just was taking what he could get rather than getting to his stuff and just doing whatever. Uh, when he's making jumpers like that, though, there's there's nothing yeah. you can do. I think people don't realize how tall he is, too. Right, like right. He's like a legit 6'10 and, and, and looks it and plays like it. Um, I don't think that he'd have anything for him. All due respect to Jimmy Butler. But this ain't the Bucks with the hurt Giannis, and this ain't the overwhelmed Knicks. This is yeah. a team that just played in the finals. They know what they're doing. So you guys I think they're sure. rightfully favored. I think you're making Jimmy mad. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, turning point for Boston, though, against Philly and really the crushing of the spirits of the Sixers, Shams. What was that turning point? I, I think the entire turning point, Michelle, the entire playoffs was when they put Robert Williams back in the starting lineup. <laughs> because last year, Ime Udoka, he, he leads that team to the NBA Finals. And they have Robert Williams, Al Horford. That was the, the new mechanism that he found with this roster to take them to the next level. And then Joe Mazzula kind of goes away from that a little bit, and it takes them 11 games into the playoffs to start Robert Williams. Uh, he had a good finish to the Sixers series, and I think now you, you, have, a, you have a Celtics team that's, that's prime. They're, they're doing the exact same thing they're doing the, they, they did last year, and I think they're in position right now for sure. I mean, definitely against the Heat. No Tyler Hero, no Victor Oladipo. <laughs> Um, maybe Eddie needs to get on here and give Jimmy Butler some more motivation. Right? Uh, he might have to, he, he needs to go like another level than he went against even Milwaukee, I think, to beat this, this Boston team. Um, yeah. I mean, can he go another level though? Like, is there another playoff level? Playoff Jimmy. For, he said he almost set the playoff record for points in a game. Like, there's more? Like, he can actually <laughs> set the record in, in, against these Celtics? The problem for him is there's, a, there's so many defenders on this Celtics team. And the collisions between him and Marcus Smart are going to set basketball mm. back 35 years. <laughs> this is going to be great. It's going to be ridiculous. But, I mean, it's hard to bet against him, but at some point this team is just overwhelmed with the talent of the Celtics, and that's how I see it. And, and I love the guys they have over there. I hate how effective Kyle Lowry is and can be. Uh, but, but, but the Celtics are too deep for that. And them two wings they have, it's, it's tough to be. There's a reason why, like Chandler said, We've looked at them as the best team in the league for most of the season, and, right. and now they're finally locked in. I don't and know. They're looking like it again. You guys uh, seem so sure. I, I don't. I nah, I'm pretty. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure about it. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, only thing that I can see is you know the dominance of Jimmy and his presence. You know how superstars are. He's a true superstar. 
you would like to think the game goes how they go, you know, in certain instances. So if, you know, you mix that in with Spo, uh, you know, play calling Jimmy again off in, into the right run, when it comes down to it, you know, Jimmy fears nothing and, you know, he's an <laughs> alpha. And, you know, the same way when he was down six telling Drew Holiday, one of the best defenders I've ever seen, <laughs> I own you. <laughs> He might snap into a Slim Jim and, <laughs> and, 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 make it, and make it about the Heat culture. You still have Bam Adebayo. You still have Max Struess that's been shooting the lights oh, out. Oh, my goodness. Shout out Duncan Robinson. He, he's getting to the rat, yeah, dropping right? dimes and hitting three or four threes. You know what I'm saying? And then you got uh, Gabe Vincent getting his little you know, Fred Van Fleet on. You know what I mean? So from there, I, I think there's something that could happen if, if, if lightning strikes the right way. I think Lightning's a winner strike. I, I just think this is the series where they need Tyler Hero. This yeah. is the season where they need Oladipo. This is the, the we need Celtics. Tyler Hero to put a uniform on. Yeah. I can't be looking at any more of those outfits. The Celtics, <laughs> they have too much. They have too much depth. They have too many tough defensive guys that can play in pick and roll, that can knock down shots. I respect everything the Heat have done this year, from a play-in team to, to, this, you know, to the eight seed, knocking off the Bucks, who I thought were the favorite to win it all this year. Uh, I just think that the Celtics, they, they play too well on both sides of the ball. And as good as Jimmy Butler is and everything he's done, there's two of them on the other team with Jalen <laughs> Brown and Jason Tatum. So I just think they have too much. Well, speaking of Gabe Vincent, Shams recently sat down with him. Let's take a listen from that interview. You've recently become the starter for the Heat in, in these playoffs. Kyle Lowry has been a very accomplished veteran leader. So what was that like? Was, was there a conversation that you two had? Was there some leadership uh, that was displayed by Kyle Lowry? Yeah, I mean, at the time, I think he was out with injury. And, I, and that's when I really stepped into it. And uh, any time that he's missed a game ever since he's been here uh, or even been there, he's been in my ear, whether it's a coverage or this team, they like to do this or this coach is known for that. And, uh, you know, he's been giving me bits of wisdom left and right, you know, even off the court stuff. So in terms of mentorship, he's been huge for me and my development. So I'm definitely grateful for God. And this is a team that's kind of full of leaders, right? Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. Um, what does it say about that? Yeah, you guys have a group of young guys, but to have an established culture and leadership as well. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, we got a lot of alphas in one room and, uh, you know, sometimes it could look crazy to, on, on the outside when you're looking in and we kind of get a little animated, but um, sometimes that's just the way we need to communicate uh, at that given moment. But uh, it's been great. You know, Jimmy's been wonderful. He's been you know, one of the best players in the playoffs, you know, when he's playing. So, they were rallying behind him, and, and, and he's leading us. Shams, what was your biggest takeaway from that? Well, I think this is a guy in Gabe Vincent. Later in the interview, he talks about free agency and how, yes, he's locked in on the, on the playoffs, but he's, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent. He's played uh, four seasons in Miami. He came up as a guy that was undrafted, had to play in the G League, two ways, minimums, and now he's going to be in a position. He's, he's the starter for this Heat team took Kyle Lowry's spot when Kyle Lowry was out. Now Kyle Lowry's playing an effective role, like Eddie just said, coming off that bench. He's playing at a pretty high level, but Eric Spolstra, this Heat team, they're sticking with him as a starter. Gabe Vincent moving forward, and this is a guy that's going to go into unrestricted free agency. He's going to have a significant market around the league as a guy that can not only potentially start, but also come off the bench. This, this Heat team has seven undrafted players in their rotation, which is easily the most in the playoffs. This is sacrilegious for me to even ask, but is Eric Spolstra the best coach in the NBA? Oh, he's up there. He's definitely the best. <laughs> shut up. He's over there. He's <laughs> definitely the best coach left in the, in the oh, NBA playoffs. Oh, there it is. Good so, wording. Uh, what he's done, what he's come from, from a video coordinator to hmm. everything he's created in Miami, like you just said, the fact that they have that many players that they find and they develop uh, through their system, it's like a farm league team where they just find these guys that no one else wants and they turn them into bona fide players like Duncan Robinson, like Struess, like Gabe Vincent, these guys, and they find their role and they buy into everything that Spo teaches with the toughness and the culture and the identity. You don't really hear that very often about teams throughout the NBA, but the Heat, one thing that's, that they have is that. And that comes a lot from Spo. He's great managing the game. He's great with the offensive ex execution at a timeout. So it really is impressive what he's done. And, and players like him. The players like going to the Heat. They love the, the system. They love everything that he presents. So he's done such a great job and a lot of their success has to do with Spo. I mean you look at what he's done over his career <clears throat> he's had the super team he has this team now with seven undrafted guys <laughs> like you mentioned very different and the way he's able to find success with each it's, it's it's a team that always comes prepared it's a team that rarely makes mistakes it's a team that's never rattled 
And and that's a lot for a team with, again, seven undrafted guys with unheralded guys like Bam. Bam wasn't drafted to be a superstar in their light, and they were able to develop him into that. So he's the entire package as a coach. You watch, you know, I know Twitter fans, they love out of timeout plays. And it's like, oh, a guy's <laughs> open. That's stuff you can see. But the things Chandler mentioned as well, the, the culture they've created there, the, the fact that they can plug in and play guys, the fact that you can sit Duncan Robinson all season long, right. put him in the do Damn doghouse, two say, yo, you can't play. We can't play for us. And then dust him off in the playoffs. Wow. And he's happy to go. And he's he's actually producing for you. That's a testament to coach and also a testament to Duncan's professionalism. But it's a testament to your system and what you what you situated there for over a decade now. I think he's the best coach in the league. All due respect to Pop and what he's done. But, I mean, you know, he's the worst record in the league. Sorry, Pop. Mm. Wow, you hate to hear that. We'll get to why in the next segment. <laughs> you Thank hate you very to see much. it. No, you don't. We don't see, see it. it. We do not see it. Uh, Evan, do you want to fill in anybody on this? No, no, I agree. <laughs> they said everything. They said everything. Um, but one thing you spoke on, versatility. You know, you went from a super team to going to, you know, teams where you needed to rebuild to positions where, you know, you're in the Eastern Conference Finals after being in a play-in game. It's a testament to the culture, to the spo and to the players staying ready. So besides Pop killing it for most of the <laughs> early thousands, <laughs> it's a difference, a change of uh, the guard. It's, it's, it's pretty crazy to watch. By the way, that picture of him, black and white picture with VHS tapes, <laughs> that was something to see. Uh, I mean, first of all, he looks 14 in this picture when he was a video coordinator, which I know everybody starts very young, but what are we? what is this? That's I love incredible. it. But everybody VHS. harps on him being a video coordinator, but he's also a hooper in college. Yeah. Like, one, like, player of the year. Yeah. All but that's not as stuff. cool. It's that's not as cool, but it's a reason, story. but he knows basketball. You, right. gotta, yeah. you gotta do to play soccer being a video coordinator <laughs> talking about, that could be me. It's like, no. <laughs> no. At like all, you'll be next to him. <laughs> uh, on the other side of the court, of course, is Joe Missoula. I don't know if it's fair or not to talk about pressure on him, but let's not kid ourselves. There always is. How much pressure is on Missoula for this thing? I think it's a pretty decent amount of pressure. Anytime you know you have championship aspirations in a city like Boston, <laughs> it's always going to be a lot of pressure, especially considering when you get so close and. There's so few teams playing. You got to throw the gun, quote, I mean, no pun intended, in somebody's lap to put the blame on. And, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, we're starting to look at the sideline even more. And um, But I think you'll have it worked out. I think the guys, you know, listen to them well. They won a lot of big games this year, and they responded. You know, they just came out of a series where they were down 3-2. And uh, he had to adjust and buckle in, and so did the rest of the team, and they did that. So they're in this position right now. And I will, I will say this, is, he's been blessed with a very, very talented, great team. Yeah. Not saying he hasn't Fair. done a great job, but yeah. a lot of people would love to be in his situation. Guys that have just, like, you know, Silas gets fired. He, he took the wrong job. He got the Rockets. He gets <laughs> mm. punished yeah. for that. It's hard to say that he would do a bad job if he was the Celtics coach and he kind of inherited this team that Missoula did. But he seems to be to be doing the right things. Players seem to like him, and they're having a heck of a season under him. So it's it's tough to say he's a great coach yet because he's, he's just now starting. But I would love to coach that team. No. <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's about the Chandler, and Joe. you would oh, yeah. hate to be a coach. No, I couldn't. But if I want, if I could inherit any team in the NBA, <laughs> that would be it. it would be the Boston Celtics. So it's it's... Doesn't seem like it's that hard of a job. Insane. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's there we go. There's the comment. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break here. When we come back, we're gonna bring out some wizards, warlocks, a Ouija board. We're gonna conjure and manifest the ping pong balls. In San Antonio's favor. Woo! 8 o'clock tonight over on ESPN. It's time to see magic happen. So seven of the last eight years, the teams with the best odds of winning have won this year. Lottery Shams, you're out there. You'll be there. What are you looking forward to? Well, obviously, whoever gets the number one overall pick, I'm definitely looking forward to. But just the value that that has for an organization, not only to improve your team, but also the value of the team. You think, you think about a team like the Charlotte Hornets, uh, who Michael Jordan, his his company has come out with a statement in, in recent months that they've engaged in conversations mm -hmm. potentially to sell. Well, they haven't sold yet, and they're still waiting to see what happens tonight. You get the number one overall pick. What happens to your team in terms of valuation, in terms of whether you want to keep the team, sell the team for even more money than where you might be pegging this organization at now? So I think uh, for, for Houston, for Charlotte, for San Antonio, Detroit, the list goes on and on. Your Spurs... Are, Michelle are among the teams that have been waiting on pins and needles mm -hmm. for tonight. And I think there's a, a value uh, for the team as a whole that's going to 
take place with whatever team gets Victor Wembanyama. It's such a crazy night, Shams. Like you just sort of sit around. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Shay. <laughs> and by the way, I do have my pop candle, really and it is ready to be lit. So I'm, I'm not joking around with Shay on that one. Shams, thank you so much. Enjoy the night. It is a crazy, weird night. Like you're just watching like a bingo hall <laughs> machine and a ball pop out. But the the probability of winning for tonight, there are three top teams. Well, top in this sense. Uh, Pistons, Spurs, and Rockets all at 14% chance at getting the coveted one spot, uh, followed by the Hornets and the Trailblazers. So let's just take those five right now. Let's, Chandler, what do you think? Best fit for Victor Wiminyama? Oh, I think it would be the Blazers, and I think what that would be great hell? for Victor, and I think it would be great for Damian Lillard. We've all been wanting him to, to get a player to play along with. He had guys like Evan Turner that were great, but they ain't Victor <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not even in that. <laughs> I, I don't think, worry about I that. I think this kind of prolongs him staying there. I don't think he leaves if they end up getting this guy. We're talking about a, a franchise changing type of player. Obviously, have the worst chance of these top five teams. And yeah. But as far as fit, it's tough. I feel like coming in with this many expectations and this amount of pressure this kid has, he would benefit greatly having <laughs> Damian Lillard kind of take that pressure off, take that, um, you know, the scouting report not being the number one guy you go to one of these other teams it's going to be a long year you're going to get a lot of reps um and i think he's going to do well which wherever he goes because he's that good he's that talented but i just think playing along a guy like damian lillard who can you know relieve so much pressure in his first year will, will be huge and, and really beneficial for this kid's growth yeah i only agree i agree with the damian lillard situation because you, you want to make sure his uh his development is on the right path uh, you see a lot of these young guys come into this game nowadays and you know, you get with the wrong group, the wrong coach, or, you know, you don't really go on the right path to learn about winning. But the next step, Michelle, you will love this, I think Coach Pop would be great for him. <laughs> because at the end of the day, the, the path and trajectory that we're expecting them to go on, you know, you really have to be around people that have seen it done. You know, you see David Robinson, Tim Duncan, and all the other greats that he was able to coach and also work with over there. I think there's something, once again, about the culture that is, uh, that would be unbelievable. I'm going to go off the deep end here a little bit. I'm looking at this beautiful graphic we have on the, on the side <laughs> over here. I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks. Okay, you know what? Hey, I'm going to go with the Dallas Mavericks. Can now we put talking. him with Luka running pick and pop? 3%? Uh, We've seen crazier things happen. But if we're talking about the best fit on this beautiful graphic we have, put him with Kyrie and, and, and Luka no. and watch what they do next year. Why would you want to send this kid into that poop show? Like, that, that's not fun for him. Uh, just tell us about Dallas. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's hear why. No, this not kid, about the fun part of Dallas. This kid would enjoy it. And it's true. The best fit is the best team in the lottery, which is the Dallas Mavericks. So. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cheap answer. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think they immediately go to a playoff team, adding this kid, adding Kyrie. I kind of like that. How do you yeah, feel? But How is do you it feel? Porzingis 2.0 in a sense? of He doesn't even shoot as well as Porzingis yet. You understand Not what I'm or... How do you feel about the young fellow being under the tutelage of Kyrie and Luka Doncic? Yeah. I don't. You, <laughs> do you get a little swagger from your, you know, yeah. your vets and shit? It's one way to really make it a PG-rated thing where we say how leaders should look, and it's another way where he's going to teach them the league and what is really up and down. Like, to a certain extent, you might want a Gordon Hayward to be the vet, but Chandler's going to teach you a lot, too. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yes, yes, Chandler, can, will. Chandler can teach you a lot, too. And, 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 you know, we had the Joe Kim Noah conversation, and, you know, it all helps in the end. You know yeah. what I mean? All right, speaking of Chandler, um, Let's take a look at this beautiful graphic, as Eddie put it, and let's rank them, the cities, as you would party schools. Go. Cities, okay, I got it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. Dallas, number one, okay. for sure. <laughs> number two would, yikes, this is not good party town. <laughs> uh, two, I'd probably go Houston. Oh, fair. Well, Harden loves it. Three, James Harden says yep. Three. Detroit off pure ratchetness. Do you think? <laughs> God, Just, I, I mean, you're going to stumble. It's, it's that one good block near the waterfront. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll it. throw that Detroit in there. Is Honestly, three. Portland has nice little nightlife. A little too hippie for me. A little too, yeah, little too weird, but... D.C. Not, some love? No, Charlotte, D.C., Indy, Utah. You can't get a double, let alone stay out a drink past that's, 11 p.m. Uh, that's that's tough. And San Antonio, the Riverwalk is just not dope. Nobody goes to the Riverwalk Where in San do you Antonio. Go? I mean, that's ridiculous. Not one to human being that lives in... Oh, my God. The rodeo, <laughs> Look, I am not here to defend San Antonio all to my death. He's but... better off staying in France. <laughs> <than those. laughs> It was yeah, good enough for tough. Tony Parker, who, by the way, he's very close to. So I'm just saying, you guys are missing out on what could happen. Is there a chance in hell that whoever gets the number one pick does not take Victor Wembanyama at one? Zero chance. No. Okay, wait, I hold like on. Scoot they can maybe you trade don't like Scoot I, I, love I like Scoot a lot. Like, you're not making a mistake with a Scoot Henderson, to be honest with you. Uh, Somebody were uh, to see uh, that, 
I mean, the Pistons curious. can't draft a point guard for the third straight year. I don't think you're making a mistake with Brandon Miller, but uh, th you're not going to look at the number one pick and not take this guy and sure. all of the potential. We you're, know how the league works. You're making Give me the a, seven six guy. You're like, making a huge mistake taking anybody other than this kid. I don't. I know Scoot is good. I know Brandon Miller is good. He's got length. He's got game. We're talking about a career franchise changing player that could is the, arguably the greatest prospect of Sam, all time. God, it's way too much pressure. <laughs> Sam Bowie? Like, Bowie. This, this, Sam Bowie. Yeah, see, there you go. That's what we're worried it's about. That's Listen, what and his body, his body does scare me a little bit. He's got the chat home grid. He's, he's very thin. He needs to put on weight. And again, when you go to one of these teams, he's going to be getting a lot of reps, a lot of minutes, a lot of load on this frail body. So I think it's better for him to go to a better team like a Portland like a Dallas, someone like that, where he doesn't have to go and play so many minutes and just get beat up all season long. So it is tough. It's a risk. It's a risk. You look at guys with his size and his frame, it's tough to stay healthy, but I'm taking, Oof. I'm rolling the dice with this kid. Like everyone. All right. Do you think on that list, Portland and Dallas are the only two teams that would become contenders immediately if they add him? I, I don't even or think anybody they're contenders else? with, no. No. They're still not contenders with him. Maybe Dallas, but yeah, Maybe. no, those teams aren't winning. So nobody up there becomes something. I mean, you go, you go, let him go to Houston, then James Harden weirdly wants to go there and they get him and then they can add some pieces. But no, we're talking about contenders. No, none of those. What teams. about the Pacers? No. No, not even with that all star point guard. You got a shooter like Buddy Hill. Yeah, like maybe keep Miles like Turner. Kinda, I mean, contender, we're forgetting there's, we're forgetting we're there's eight teams but... in the playoffs that are better than all of these teams. And some, <laughs> this rookie, I get it. It's going to take some time for this yeah. guy, though. It's, he's, he's not just going to go and make a team a contender right away, I don't think. And I just know what happens when you make it to the second round. We swear everybody, we forget oh, yeah. we forget the history and we swear everybody got a chance. Couple oh, injuries. No. Yeah, yeah, what else? Like, I mean, look at this season. Like, look at this season. These My playoffs are exactly, crazy. Yeah. So I feel like that's not. Is there a better way to do this, by the way? Is the draft lottery still the best way to figure out the order? No, nah, just, we got really just, Feel it's, it's entertainment. So, like, let's just be realistic and be like, put the big fella in New York. You know what I mean? <laughs> why, not, whoa, like why not take these 10, what is that, 10 teams? Take these 10 teams and then put them in a tournament, and you have to win this tournament Fine. of bad teams to get him. I like this. So it's like you lose all year long, but then you got to come together and show your show your potential. I like well, Dallas. 10 teams. Now, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I like then Dallas. Dallas. I think you do five or six teams, because 10 is a little yeah, bit. Take, it, it, well, take, yeah, take those six. Stop at Orlando. Yeah, take stop at Orlando. Take those six teams, and then they have just I'm a in. dog fight for Victor. So, I, I mean, that. Dame's going to go crazy. Oh, you can't leave Dame alone with those kids. Yeah, then I'm taking Portland <laughs> if you take them six. So the you know, question is, how hard do you play if you're the power forward of the Spurs and you're like, oh yeah, this is my starting job and my $40 million. Also, you have load management and you just wait to get in that bottom six and then you play all your guys to win that tournament. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. The, like, you there's know no real, right. real. So this was imagine, not a good idea. <laughs> imagine the shamelessness of a team that can win playoff games going, yeah. you know what? Let them do a dice game. If I'm Portland, I'm resting <laughs> right? Dame, I'm resting <laughs> Jeremy Grant and then I'm just playing them in this in this tournament yeah. to, to get the number one. By the way, don't do tough. that movement again on TV. Oh, that's just, uh, <laughs> that's just some advice from a veteran. Uh, <laughs> That's, That's a, a gift. That's it's a, a, yeah. a gift. You always got to go there. I'm so uh, sorry. You even Up got next. a crowd reaction. That's <laughs> crazy. We got a live audience. Uh, Anthony Edwards says he's going to France to train with Rudy Gobert during this offseason. That is a reality show that should happen. We'll discuss when we come back. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up, and run it back. All right, James Harden bringing back the fats. Oh, wow. Forced to trade out of Philly next season. Look. <laughs> you didn't even want to read we that. Did, I know. I, I got halfway through. I was like, no, we're not. We're not. But, yes, we are going to talk James Harden because, look, Sixers are done. Um, the rumor that just seems to not want to go away is that James Harden has mad interest in returning to Houston and the Rockets. I, what do you do with this information? Do you buy it? No, I, I, and I love James, <laughs> and I love Houston, and I, and I guess I get it, but you, you only have, what, three, four, five more years, just just move there, retire there. Right. You have no chance of winning there. You, 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 you have a young, it's basically a rebuild situation. I get maybe if they happen to snag the number one pick tonight and they get Victor, then it makes it a little bit more exciting. But James Harden is a Hall of Famer and the only thing he's missing is a championship and he has zero chance of winning a championship on this current roster. So I don't really get it. I don't see it. I don't know why, you, again, He's 33, 34 years old. Go retire there in two right? or three years when you're done. But to yeah. go play there, and that, that doesn't make sense. I mean, I assume he has some sort of a beautiful compound as it is already. Oh, he does. Right? He's like, got so restaurants. Why, he's got a nice deal. house. But you go there, go there in the summer or retire there. This makes no sense to me. No, I agree <laughs> with you because right now he's in a position you, when we're talking about legacy. So, you know, if you're going to leave there, go somewhere where you can go play for a contender. 
<laughs> or do something along those lines. But we're talking about Houston Rockets. I mean, it's, the streets ain't missing you that bad. You'll be <laughs> straight. Someone call me a liar. <laughs> the streets might be missing him a little bit. We're talking, we're talking about the wrong legacy, I think. But hey, look, if he wants to go back, he wants to be with his family, I, I guess. I mean, it, the way he lost the series is disheartening. Nine points, three of 11 shooting. Mm. You would think all that's left for him to do in this league is win a title. So you, if anything, he's taking short money somewhere trying to win a title. But it's not been James's way. He took a little bit of a discount this year. And he's going to get that money back at some point. I do love, like, the Reddit conspiracy theory that this is all a grand scheme to stockpile assets for the Rockets, to take out the Nets, to take out the Sixers, and make his way back in two years. I don't believe it, but yeah. I think that's that the type of entertainment I signed deep. up for. You're going to bank all that on a game seven Harden? Two years sabbatical to yeah, go I back to Houston. Well, but then I, then I see reports to Phoenix, which that would make mm. more sense to me, right? Yeah, that would sure. that would put like the stamp that. on his career. That I would like give that. him a, a real championship contending team. He doesn't have to do as much with Book and Katie. That makes sense. Yeah. Going to this rebuild in Houston, is, I, I, don't, I don't see it. Come home, Uno. Come home to Phoenix. <laughs> You're good out there. That was so easy. <laughs> so easy. Uh, look, Joel Embiid, uh, uh, of course, also had a bad playoff. Same, same team. Um, and then it makes us think... Should we be giving the MVP award after the season, after the playoffs, Evan? You buying that? No, nah, because they should have been done that. So we might as well just keep it the way the way. Why? It is. We can fix it now. I mean, I guess. But you remember the big, you know, hoopla when Dirk Nowitzki won it after mm. getting eliminated mm -hmm. by uh, the We Believe Warriors back in the day. But, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's like what we say. It's a season award. It's not anything else, obviously. Um, Best player of the season, I just think you should keep it that way. Unfortunately, they lost in the second round. It is what it is, but. I think you could change it. I think you could make it. I don't I don't think you should. I think, again, I think Joel Embiid deserved the MVP. He was the best player all year long, yeah. and he just took the Celtics to game seven, and, and, and yeah, it didn't go their way. But this guy dominated. He was healthy, and, and he kind of exceeded expectations for this team. Uh, you know, one, one went away, and they're going to the Eastern Conference Finals, and I think they beat the Heat. So uh, I think it was a successful season. It just didn't end the way they wanted to. But this dude dominated all year long. He's the MVP, no matter if he loses first round or wins the championship. He was the best player. All season long. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there are awards for everything else too. So. Yeah. Just don't bring the banquet back. Give the award away oh. whenever you want. Don't bring the cringeworthy banquet back. But no, it's a regular banquet. season award. We've seen we've seen worse it flame outs from MVPs That's and playoffs. Fair. So, you know, it is what it is. But I will say this: if Jokic goes to the finals and he wins, and he wins, yeah. then we got to transfer all that energy of yo, should he win the MVP if he can? Right to Joel Embiid over there in the East. Oh, it will. I think it will. I think it'll be very fair if that happens and we, and we have to do all that. Um, there was a recent interview where Jimmy Butler said that the Heat had offered to unretire the number 23, um, which, of course, was for MJ, when he joined the team. Eddie, you buying that? No, he's a historic capper. <laughs> and he's known as that. Wow. I, I don't believe that. And he said Pat Riley himself did it, yeah. which, which made me think, mm, maybe there's a little bit of animosity I mean, still in there for, for old Pat. But awkward. no, they, they they made the really strange decision to just, to just retire Mike's number. Yeah. And I think they're just going to honor that forever. But yeah. shout out Jimmy for, for that lot. That's a good lot. That's also, like a nice That's a yeah. good lot. I also don't want to be the dude to unretire Michael Jordan's jersey to then take that number. No way no. I want to yeah. be that guy. I think it was weird that they retired the jersey in the first place, but I'm not going to be the first dude to wear 23 after they yeah. unretire his jersey. Especially after when LeBron showed up and didn't do it himself. And then they so. do it for Jimmy. And they Why do it did for, they like, do that? Everybody, they're, they're tweaking out there. Yeah, they, they, that's not, not a real story. Not There's nobody that saw Jimmy Butler and it's like, you know what, bro? <laughs> Grab that. That's for you? <laughs> Bring it down here and put no it on shot, no. There's no way. No I shot. love Jimmy Butler for sure, and every now and then, if I was like had enough drinks, I'd be like, is that MJ? But not not in that sense. If, no. if, what? <laughs> if he'll wear a faux dreads, he'll tell this story in, in BS that's it. A so great point. take Jimmy for a grain of salt. Jimmy's that's just all fun. And just like, He's enjoying this life. Yeah, Jimmy's living his best life. Not like Chandler, but it's his best life non nonetheless. That's uh, true. We, Anthony Edwards, look, he's going to France. <laughs> nice. <laughs> to train with Rudy Gobert during the off season. Are you buying that this is a good idea? You know what's great? Right <laughs> when I think I can't like this kid anymore, he says some stuff like this where it's, I believe him. And by the way, France is a 
great right? place. I'll and, go to France. And, yeah, he should do this. The but this, even just publicly saying this, we know all the stuff with Rudy. We know everything they've invested in Rudy. For yeah. for Anthony Edwards at his age to take on even this leadership kind of comment, to go there, to be with him, to support him, to get familiar with him, to get in the gym with him. Y'all are getting con. Is, this is no. huge. No, though. this kid's like, I want to go to France for three months. I yeah. think Boom, he's going to definitely break curfew some nights. On Rudy's I mean, dime, by the on way. On Rudy's <laughs> dime. But this shows, Smart this, man. this honestly shows me his maturity and his growth. The fact that he's Brilliant. even thinking, maybe he doesn't know, but the fact that he said it means something. Yeah, and I, I'm not even holding him accountable for how the results turn out. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, oh, even Rudy better. just comes back. No more Rudy. I appreciate you showing up. And I'm, I'm sure you'll get some chemistry, but I think Anthony Edwards, like you said before, there was a couple of uh, moments this year, whether it was like the all-star snub and stuff like that, where I think he responded very maturely and showed what type of level he's at. And um, I think from the sake of like the OGs and the great players, I think he's, uh, you know, tucked his tail enough and showed enough respect to show that he's going to do the right path and, you know, earn it. And I think they got a real star in Minnesota. He, he's unbelievable. I'll tell you this, Kyle Anderson somewhere rolling his eyes at this comment. I mean. <laughs> hey, he picked a side. This, this, <laughs> this looks like Rudy knows where the money's at on that team. That's how I'm taking it. Right. Like, really? Unless Carl Anthony Towns comes around and says, yeah, guys, I'm going to France too. Uh, he, he's making the right decision. Does it feel like there's pressure on Carl Anthony Towns to now go to France? I don't think I don't think Cat feels pressure in bit. general. I, I don't like, think he's. By the way, we're talking about going to France. It's like if Towns. It's if, not if, like we're going to. If Cat doesn't go now, it's like he's kind of a bad team. And the whole really? team should go. And yeah. the France that Rudy Gobert will Thank you. invite him to. That's an entirely that's different France, France than like the yeah, one where we Expedia. And you want you give credit? Like, do you have to go? Like, they might not like Rudy. Do you want to go hang out with Rudy in France no, for like a month? Like, no, but it's about that's the point, though, isn't yeah. it? Like the team. Yeah, and yeah, you do want to go to Paris. Yes, for, for with Rudy Gobert on his dime. <laughs> well, yeah, with the max contract. By the way, why haven't Canada you offered us like the the Cabo compound for us to go I build said, team let's spirit? Let's record from the finals instead of coming here. Let's do it in Cabo. Let's do it. Yo. How come we haven't done that? Well, Jason. <laughs> All right, we'll talk that. about it in the next break, I guess. Um, Darvin Ham said. Of course he did. That LeBron should have been all NBA first team. <clears throat> you buying that? <laughs> Here's my problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, but no. no, he shouldn't. But I do agree that there's, there, there was plenty of years that he should have won the MVP, MVP. that sure. he didn't. Yeah. So this happens every single year where there's someone that got, Jokic should be first team all NBA. Like you know what I mean? Like they, they shouldn't. Will do be it, after this position. They shouldn't yeah. do it position. Yeah, where, it's over. Like, like you're telling me Jokic is the, not on the first team all NBA when he was runner up for MVP. It makes no sense. But I get what Darvin Ham's saying. LeBron James is one of the best players in the NBA, but he didn't deserve to be top five this year. Yeah, no, I agree. I don't think he should have been top five either. Mm -mm. It goes out saying, but, you know, we understand it's great. But he also could have three or four more MVPs. If, if six more, if they just took the best player every year, then he'd have them all, you know, for, yeah. for a decade. But that's not how it works. <laughs> He made third team. He missed a bunch of games. It, it, it's fine. Like, it, it, give it to the young fellas. Jason Tatum should have been above him like he was. I believe, believe Jalen Brown was above him. I think he should have been above him as well. LeBron's have won many awards. Like, it, whatever they send you for this, um, it's collecting dust in some cellar yeah, in his compound. So, it's... I wouldn't He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what the I hardware would not looks like. Know, All right, Michelle. fair. Uh, up next, we're gonna uh, we're, we're gonna chat and we're gonna end the show on some happiness back, and some laughter. That's the tease, guys. <laughs> Does that make you want to keep watching? <laughs> you want point for I'm changing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dad. Run it back. Run it up. 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 Get in on the NBA playoffs action. We're out from the first tip with FanDuel right now. New customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's 1000 bucks back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. So download the app and bet on the NBA playoffs today. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. We have 30 seconds left to go. Western Conference Finals, game one picks. Chandler, go. Denver, by the way, six point favorites. Nuggets cover six point. I think they punched them in the mouth tonight. I think they win by double digits. Okay. I'm going to Lakers. Double. Still home court right away. I'm going with them. Really? Yeah. You guys are really on the this Lakers first train. One? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with the Lakers. What's well. happening yeah. right now? I just, I just like. You have to see me tomorrow. <laughs> I want the chaotic world where LeBron's up in this conference finals. I, I, I just want the most 
banter and BS possible. This, is here, this gets real dicey. Do you want to see me Lakers get violent? win game one. Because it sounds like <laughs> yeah. you want. Like, I kind of do. I got Denver. Let's go. Dude, Chandler and I will remain hating until the very end, and they they grab these microphones out of our dead, corpsey hands. Because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, I'm sorry. Too morbid. You're right. I, I take it back a couple notches. But yes, Denver, LA tonight. We've got two for Denver, two for LA. No matter what happens, we'll be back here tomorrow at 10 Eastern to discuss. Two of us will be right. <laughs> Run it up, run it back like a running back.